We're glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, we welcome you to the DuPage Art League's art demonstration featuring watercolor artist Michael Ireland. Tonight, the library is partnering with uh, the DuPage Art League, and we are delighted to bring you this program tonight. Founded 63 years ago, the DuPage Art League is committed to the arts and bringing enriching programming to art lovers throughout our community. Located on Front Street in downtown Wheaton, the DuPage Art League is both a school and gallery. They are dedicated to promoting and encouraging the visual arts through classes, workshops, gallery exhibits, and free public fine arts programs. Their classes and workshops cover a wide range of mediums and are designed for all ages. The storefront gallery and gift shop are open to the public. We are grateful to the DuPage Art League for arranging tonight's demonstration by acclaimed watercolor artist, Michael Ireland. Michael's fascination with the effects of light and color through transparent watercolor began over 45 years ago at the American Academy of Art in Chicago. Today, Michael is a nationally recognized painter as well as an accomplished creative director and graphic designer. Michael's painting style and techniques challenges traditional scale and format resulting in works measuring up to 20 feet in length. His artwork is part of public and private collections throughout the country. So thank you so much for being with us tonight, Michael. Thank you very much, Barry. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank you and um, of course the Wheaton Public Library. Uh, Sue Thomas, thanks for everything. Uh, DuPage Art League, thanks for inviting me. And uh, it's just a pleasure. Uh, I've done dozens of workshops over my life, uh, given plenty of lessons from Peninsula Art School up to, um, you know, Dillman's and in town here and private lessons. But uh, I have to admit, this is the first time I've done Zoom. <laughs> so bear with me. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but uh, we'll get right to it. But before we do, I'd like to introduce my partner in the uh, Life, love, and watercolor. <laughs> this is Mary, Mary Ireland. Hi, nice to meet everybody, and thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm going to be popping in here and there a little bit uh, with some announcements that Michael and I have. Uh, but before I go, I just want to let you know that uh, we're offering a 20% discount to all you attendees uh, for joining us tonight on our website for. Uh, the shop portion of prints. So if you'd like to ponder and look at the prints and we, like I said, offer you a 20% discount on those and the code for that, the special discount code is going to be DuPage Art League, all caps. Yeah, okay, thanks. And I'll turn and, it over to Michael. And just to plug that a little bit more, uh, all of our Chiclets, 100% um, archival and they come out of uh, the OCO Brown studio over on Spring Road in Elmhurst. So it's right in the neighborhood. We're supporting local business and uh, they're great people. They do great work. So if you feel, you know, uh, like you wanna buy a print, feel, feel free. Um, but uh, let's get to it. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I, I guess I have a reputation these days for painting large. Um, and how did we get here? Well, I'm not gonna go into the, um, into the old days of uh, the back then stories, but uh, it's been about 50 years since I've been painting. So, you know, I do have a little bit of a track record, but, but even, even as I go back, thinking through all those times, and I began painting at uh, the American Academy of Art. And I'm not sure how many of the people in the audience are, uh, our painters, or just love painting, or friends, neighbors. But um, the thing about watercolor that just enthralled me was the beauty of the wash and how the chemistry, the feel, the excitement, things happen that you just don't expect. Um, 
And, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, just this alone. The first time I saw the chemistry of watercolor and how it started to work on its own, I fell in love with this immediately. I, I just could not get away with it. And it's been something that's been with me all my life. I, I think there's a lot of people who feel that way. Um, it's just, it's magic. It really is. Now, the thing about watercolor though, um, <laughs> I liken it to, uh, I liken it to having children, <laughs> to having kids. And some of you may pick this up. You may know what I mean. You know, you can practice and you can do everything throughout your whole life and follow all the values, follow all the rules. And then watercolor, like kids, they're just going to do, it's going to do what it wants to do. <laughs> and what you have to realize is that you've done your best and you followed all the rules and you just have to let the beauty be the beauty. It's going to, it's going to take care of itself. If you start out the right way, if you, if you're good with it, if you're true to yourself and you practice, it all works out. And I think I could say that about my kids too. <laughs> so, um, what we're going to do tonight is um, we're going to take a watercolor, we're going to turn this into a watercolor action park. Basically, the idea is, you know, when I started painting, I would think this would be similar to a lot of, a lot of you. You know, I started out with two brushes that were probably this big. This was my large sheet of paper. So then the question is then how do you get to this from these? And then lo and behold, how do you get from those to these? Um, and so goes the subtitle of this workshop, The Challenges and Joys, because there's challenges, there's joys, there's uh, things you don't expect when you go larger with watercolor. Um, and it's not just, it, it is relative, but it's also exponential. Once you start moving into a larger format, a larger feel, um, everything grows. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that from prepping to painting to everything to shipping and everything else that goes along with that. So, um, but one of the things, like I said, that are just about as exciting as can be is watching these colors come together and just do things. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't plan or you shouldn't think about what you're doing. Um, but when you bring certain colors together and magic happens, um, there's just nothing like it. And you let these colors and everything happen. So, what we're going to do is um, we're going to move right into a demo and move from this smaller size, which was, you know, something that we all began at to a bit of a larger size. And um, what I've done is, here's a very, very little reference piece. Uh, so it's just so you can see where we're going with this. Um,
I have a, uh, this is a half sheet of 40 by 60, 300 pound watercolor paper. I've cut it into uh, half horizontally. Uh, I work a lot of my work in a horizontal fashion. I think it comes from, you know, just being out here, I'm out in, uh, out in Cary, Illinois, there's prairie everywhere where I walk almost daily. And the expanse of the prairie is something I just, I fell in love with. It became basically a muse of mine. And it's something that I paint on a very regular basis. Now, the one thing about this stuff, normally, whenever I've done workshops or any kind of demos, I stay in a very kind of a comfort zone. I, I think there's a lot of artists that do that when, when we give demos and we put ourselves out there in front of everybody. Um, this is kind of a stretch for me, uh, doing the Zoom demo. Uh, so I figured, well, what the heck? Let's just get a little bit uh, risky because that comes with the, the nature of the medium. So I'm going to uh, change it up just a little bit. Uh, I don't normally do this, but what I'm doing is I'm changing my palette to a cadmium yellow and a violet purple that's going to neutralize this. Basically, I'm going to be working on a triad today. Um, using cadmium yellow, a cobalt blue, and alizarin crimson. Uh, one of the reasons I'm doing that yeah, is that uh, I do have purples and violets in my in my stash here. Um, if I use the two as a combination, the blue and the alizarin, then I can you know grab each of those colors individually and use those as some highlights. Thanks, Ed. So it's it's pretty simple. I I work with a butcher tray uh, almost consistently. Um, no small paint trays, and you're going to see why in a little bit later. Because uh, as we're moving on, basically, I, like I said, we're going to go bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, And like I said, it's it is it is relative, you know. As as you saw, just in these you know these early washes, yeah. You know, um, I was using a brush about this size. Now I'm moving up to this, and of course everything takes a little bit more paint, a little bit more water. Um, I think the thing that excites me the most about watercolor and just in this medium painting is um, the wash itself. You know, there's, there's essentially there's essentially yeah, two moves we have and that's the wash and the stroke. And um, when you get into a into a larger piece and larger and larger, um, what used to be a stroke is actually now a wash. And 
your stroke, you know, is just one big, big wash anymore. So it all kind of comes together in that respect. And I'm going to just flood this with a little bit more and then we're going to see if we can have this thing explode a little bit. Getting this beautiful, beautiful set of color in here. And you can see that the sunlight is going to be coming in here and here and here. All this color, even though you don't see it in here, though, you might just catch it right there. It's there and it's influencing everything in this painting, in this scene. This is something I came across. It was only, gosh, two days ago, I think, that I took this photo. Um, and it's just when I arrived to the prairie. It, I was just about to turn the corner and take the dog up the hill. And this one just struck me. So, What I do a lot too is, you'll notice I, I put a couple of pencil lines in there, basically some cheap lines in a way. Um, but I like to, I like to use the brush. I like to use the stroke as, as the draftsmanship of it. Um, that feels like a, like a pretty nice start at the moment and I'm going to just grab my paper towels um, and work up a little bit of cobalt and a Lizrin and get this beautiful purple violet and we're going to just let this flow right into the sea. You can see that you can see the shadows really are making up most of this whole painting. So what we're doing here is we're doing nothing but painting shape. I'm going to graduate that up and try to figure out a couple of those shadows. And as a reference point, we're going to
Okay, so we're gonna let this, we're gonna let this settle in a little bit. As you can see there's a ton of water in there. What we've tried, to, what I've tried to do here is accentuate the the colors or the the light that's coming through the path here, and that's making up this area here. We can kick that back a little bit more, but this whole area is going to be one big shadow area, and um, we're going to let that set for just a minute. Okay, so I started painting, like I said, about, uh, gosh, about 50 years ago. Uh, I came home about 20 years ago after selling a, uh, a design business and decided that it was going to be full-time. Uh, this was my life. Um, my poor wife, every time I started up and I started especially doing these washes, I'd be down here in the basement or down the studio and... I do a wash like this, this beautiful wash. I'd be, Mary, Mary, come here quick. Look at this. And of course, being the wonderful woman that she is, she would like run down the stairs. And there's a lot of stairs here. Uh, run down the stairs. Oh my God, what's wrong? What's up? What's, yeah. I said, look at this. Isn't this the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? And she hit her head. She would fall for this one <laughs> time after time. I think she's just, smartened up by now, but uh, you know, that's how much I love it and that's how beautiful this, this process is. I mean, you just can't help but love it. Um, it's, it's fun, it's exciting, and um, you know, this is what makes up, this is what makes up my day. So, It's still pretty wet there, but it's dry enough. I can start blocking a couple of things in and start giving this some shape. Michael, if I can interrupt just for a second, would it be possible to, to hold the painting up a little bit just so that we can see it really well before you do the next part? Oh, sure, uh, sure. Part? I can bring it up. That's great, thank you. Sure. Yeah, if you see anything, Barry, that uh, helps the audience, let me know. Sure. Happy to oblige. Um, 
whether it's live or video, uh, it's just one of the tough parts about doing uh, uh, doing workshops or demos of watercolor. You know, unless you have the, the mirror above you and you're painting backwards in front of everybody or, or not. A lot of the watercolor is always on a more flat surface. I'm sure everyone knows that. So it is a little tougher sometimes, but uh, let's do what we can do here. And uh, I'm gonna swap out, have some fresh water here. And um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this violet, though it's going to have a little bit more blue in it. And we're going to Kick, kick this back a little bit. As we start to define some some background in here. And this this feels it's feeling even you know more typical um, of the season that we're just about to enter, which I'm sure is a favorite of many of yours, many of you out there. Um, certainly a wonderful time to paint and be a painter and get reference material. Um, I'm not sure how early y'all are up, but uh, you know, if you get up at 5.30 or 6 and you get out to the prairie or a walk down the stroll in the park or the prairie path uh, by you folks, um, these are the colors that, uh, that come out and that you start to see. So while this might be a little bit larger, I should never have done that. Um, I'm trying to check the temperature here. So that's still pretty wet. But um, It's really a great time to get out in the morning, late afternoon, that magic time. Um, it's not very often that this is all a little bit different for me. Um, it's not all that often that I paint from photography. What, uh, what happens a lot of times, and it's really a I don't do a lot of plain air, but as I walk and as I paint, I'll come across a path like this. And I did it this day too. Um, I've got different size brushes here. Yeah, this and you know, this, as I said. Um, and I'll look at the landscape and just basically take a, a stroke and say, okay, well, that's a, you know, that's a big sky wash brush and you can see how that goes and, you know, kind of play it out and commit some of these strokes and some of these kind of movements to a, to a motor memory, if you, if you like. Um, and then I usually try to take that back uh, with me into the studio and start painting pretty, pretty soon after that. So, um, it's kind of a fun exercise and 
my there might be a dog walker or two that thinks you're a little crazy while you're out there, but but try it. If you see some trees, you know, take your take your brush up, you know, your imaginary brush up, take your brush up and work out the branches or you know, do a, a wash with a nice big brush and you can feel it. You can it's it's something that you can bring back into the studio with you. While we're talking about brushes, if I uh, there was a question, are your brushes natural or synthetic? It's really a combination of, of brushes. Um, I have a couple of synthetic. Um, what do I have here? I've got a Robert Simmons Sapphire. This is a uh, Robert Simmons Skywash. Uh, this is pure sable, <laughs> and this is probably about as old as I am. You can see I've taped this up a hundred times and it's just one of my favorite brushes. I, it goes everywhere with me. Um, basically, it is true. I think the, the more you pay for a brush, the more you get out of it. But uh, the brush that works for you is the best brush. Um, I, these two brushes, I'll be using a little bit later. I mean, purely synthetic. But they're big and they hold a lot of water and they they push paint, um, and it works. Yeah, and I'm, you know if I were to buy a Kalinsky of this size, I think I'd probably be, you know, putting the house up for uh, for a refinance just to pay for it. So, uh, Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, what I, what I'd love to do, what I'd love to do is go into this just a little bit more right now, but I'm going to be prudent and say this is just a little too wet. Um, and it'll be, it'll be a disaster. So we're going to let it sit for a couple of minutes. Um, and, uh, Let me point something out here, you know, because I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that really do want to go to a bigger place. Um, and while this is about painting, th this is really about the process of how do we get bigger. So it's the challenges, the joys, as I said. Um, I'm going to put this down for a second and let it dry, but we'll talk about little bit here about that challenge part, okay? So, so here we go. I'm uh, call myself, I, I'm a professional artist now. I'm taking work out and making a career out of this. And, you know, of course you have to frame, you have to get everything ready and uh, get going with this. So, here I am, I'm working at this size on beautiful paper. And so, you know, it becomes a piece, you know, of this size. And there's a fair amount of challenges that come with this now. All of a sudden, I've got a huge piece that's expensive to frame that is showing a lot of reflections. And while it's still beautiful in a home, it just becomes a little bit harder to sell. It becomes a little bit harder to, um, you know, transfer. It's a little bit more fragile. Um, and, you know, I've got to make a living. We all have to make a living. So what do we do? You know, what's, how do we get past this? It's hard to take into an institutional place. A, uh, our consultant, a designer may not want something like that because of the reflection or the glass or other things, it's not easy to handle. Um, so what do you do? Um, I came across what's become one of my favorite mediums or one of my favorite substrates. That's um, Aquaborn, uh, which is a masonite panel. Uh, I'm sure you've 
you've seen it over at Flex, and you've seen it at plenty of you know plenty of other artists are familiar with this. You know, it's an aqua board. It's a masonite back. It's a uh, kale and clay substrate with gesso. Uh, very absorbent, beautiful product. Um, and the beauty about it is um, it comes really big. You know, it can be a four foot by eight foot, you know, sheet of uh, substrate for you. So that was the aha moment for me about how to take things just a little bit bigger. Um, so, um, where are we going? I'm gonna let this sit for a second. I'm gonna pull this away and show you a little bit about the beauties of this big, gorgeous board. Because if you do want to go really large, I think this is probably your next step. We'll just pull this up. Can you grab the edge of that table and just pull it up this way? Thanks. Okay. That's great. Michael, right. I'm, I'm going to <laughs> thank you very much. Um, as you're moving things around just a little bit uh, and talking about that aqua board, there was a, another question just confirming you usually work wet on wet. Is that correct? My initial, um, my initial passes are almost exclusively wet on wet. Um, I think that harkens back to that that magical place that I that I find in the watercolor, uh, but not only that, I I, um, I studied with Shapiro. That I'm sure there's plenty of uh, students and other artists out there that have themselves and you know know his reputation. There was something about Shapiro that he did that I remember at least that stuck with me was that. He would add this, this atmosphere, uh, and he brought that in immediately uh, to his paintings. I never knew what he was doing, but there'd be these washes of color that, as the painting progressed, it would turn out to be essentially dancing white, and you'd see it dapple all the way across. And that was whether it was a street scene, a boat scene at a, at a wharf, or you know, some of his favorite, the, the work he did with the, the glades and the trees and, you know, in those, you know, leaves that glistened. Um, so, yeah, I, I do tend to work wet and wet right off the bat. Um, so, um, which, which leads me to, to this. Um, with with watercolor, and this is with respect to each and every one of the painters out there that work with landscapes and everything else, because God knows I have enough barns and fences and everything else in my life. You know, I've got stacks and stacks over there. But um, it was becoming a little redundant and a little tiresome and things like that. And I still love this big wash and, um, it was after a walk in the prairie, and like I said, following through on these big moves, these big washes, that, you know, I just wanted that, that thrill. And um, just the only thing that mattered was the, the wash and the stroke. It's kind of like, um, Kind of like a golf game. I want to perfect my stroke, perfect that. So it was time after time, it was consistent. And 
ready to go. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm going to grab just a little bit more water. <laughs> okay. So this, as I said, is part of how things grow exponentially. Um, it's not just relative anymore. So what I'm going to do is... One of the things I guess I'm known for these days, I just need to clean off this brush a little bit more. Um, I guess one of the reputations I have these days is for these large, expansive prairies. Um, and I'm very fortunate because it kind of meets uh, two criteria for me. One is the beauty of the wash, and the other is just unadulterated fun, um, which I think I promised you a, uh, a watercolor action park. So I guess this would be the closest thing I have to the big water slide. Uh, Similar to what I just said about Mr. Shapiro, is I like to just create an atmosphere. And I'll tell you, if you paint in this medium, this is nothing but pure fun right now. This is unadulterated fun. So we're going to mix it up a little bit. Now the thing about this too is um, it's not cheap. <laughs> there's about there's about 10 bucks worth of paint right there. And we're just going to let it go. And this, my friends, to me, is what it's all about. This is when it all comes together. And the magic really starts to kick in. There's I'm just setting up, I'm just setting up a scene, and this is something that I, there's just some motor memory in there, there's some thoughts from other walks in the prairie, maybe we're at, maybe we're at split in two, and the light just came shining through. Michael, if I can interrupt with another question. Someone is asking, do you work on board treated with absorbent watercolor ground? Uh, well, this specifically is a watercolor ground. Uh, as I said, it's made by Ampersand down in uh, Austin and it's a proprietary mixture, so I don't really know exactly what it is, but I know kale and clay is a huge 
part of the uh, process. Um, I do use, um, while we're talking, I'm trying to grab a nice, a nice accent to this beautiful yellow here and have a little bit more, more fun with this if you don't um, But uh, that said, and I'll show you as we move on through this, I do use an absorbent ground. Um, golden, uh, is it golden? Yeah. Golden makes an absorbent ground that is really quite lovely. It's, it's a little stiff for me. Um, it doesn't have the same properties as this particular um, substrate, but I'll show you in a minute what uh, what I use it for. Um, primarily, I'll use an absorbent ground over <laughs> over mistakes on something like this, but. Uh, I'll use it even more so on canvas. So if I'm working with a with a stretched canvas, um, I have one right over there. I'll show it to you in a minute. That's got the absorbent crowd. Um, and I think personally, the, the trick with the absorbent ground for me is um, if I put it on straight out of the jar or the bottle, it becomes uh, it's a little stiff, it's a little hard to work with, and it's almost too absorbent for me, uh, if that makes any sense. What I prefer to do is um, is dilute it at least maybe in half and uh, put two coats on, maybe dilute it by 75% and put two really thin coats on there. That seems to work a little bit better for me. Um, so. And just to clarify, is that a type of masonite? That, that we have right here. Um, yes, this, um, I'll do a full product pitch and I do not get paid by, <laughs> by Ampersand at all. Uh, they're, but they're lovely people. I, I, I know the owner, um, Elaine, who basically invented the product with a, another artist down in Austin. But it's aqua board. They make the uh, pastel board, gesso board. You can find this at Blix. Um, but it's uh, all archival. Do they have any kind of ingredients on here? No, but they are committed to the environment. So. Okay. Uh, and so just a clarification, um, sometimes you work on aqua board, but other times on canvas? Yeah, it, um, I, I'm fortunate that I have a, a number of corporate clients, uh, design clients, uh, art consultants. Uh, so there's a lot of times that we'll work out either the structure of it. Sometimes it's about the shipping, uh, the large pieces that I, I produce. Um, so this is like an eight foot board. If I've been commissioned to do something like in the 20 foot range or 30 foot range, I'm almost always going to be working on a board this size or made out of the masonite because I mean, basically masonite is what it is. It's construction material. Uh, it's no different than wall paneling in that regard. So um, I've got a tremendous 
woodworker framer that uh, helps me build the, the structures for these. Uh, on the other hand, if I'm working on a large piece of canvas, I've got one right over here, I'll show it to you in a bit. It's um, 68 by 64, I think. Um, that's dictated by, to be perfectly honest, it's dictated by price. Okay, we have this much and then, well, okay, Michael, if you're gonna ship that piece in Masonite at that size, what's it gonna cost? Well, the shipping is gonna be 12, hundred dollars. Uh, whereas I could put that money back into the painting as a canvas, roll it up and ship it, and you know it's a couple hundred. And that actually just plays back into the, you know, right into the price of the, the piece. So um, it's always a, you know, it's working out issues with the with the clients not only in palette and everything else, but budget wise and structure, how's it going to be hung? Uh, there's a lot that goes with this. I want to show you this real quick too. Um, before this dries too much, one of the beauties of this, and by the way, let me, let me give you a full, the full look here. So this is what we have right now. And, um, it's it's a really pretty start to be honest and i think there's a lot going on here i can turn this into um i mean i see where it's going right right off the bat and that's the beauty of this i, I know it's called i know a lot of people end up calling me an abstractionist um but i don't see that i, I and i think that's the I'm going back to that to that wash area. I look at those washes and from far away, those grasses and everything else, it's almost a realistic look, but when you get in really close, they become abstract in themselves. And that's almost where all this stuff has evolved. But one of the beauty, beauty, beauties of this product is it picks up so well. So I don't know if you can see that line that came through there. Um, okay. Or you can even see the pickup on this is just gorgeous and you can pretty much get right down to the to the white um and so <laughs> here's proof of the footing this this is uh we're back to the challenges of watercolor okay this is a big board and it's not it's not light okay it's <clears throat> It's a big, heavy piece of masonite. Um, I remember my doctor taking me in for a physical, saying, "All right, well, you're just you're an artist. You sit sit around all day. So what are you, you know, what are you doing for exercise?" It's the doctor. I paint. You don't get it, <laughs> okay? So this is. I mean, you're we're moving big pieces of masonite around the studio, day in, day out. We're taking them upstairs, we're taking them down. Just three days ago, three days ago, an old minion semi pulled up with an eight foot by four foot pallet that weighed about 600 pounds that we had to pull up um, with a hand truck and bring it into the garage. Well, these aren't things that you go to Blick, you don't go to the corner store and pick this stuff up. So um, this is my only uh, word of caution <laughs> to anybody that wants to start going out really large. Be careful what you're getting into. Um, I did a workshop up at Dillman's. Had about eight students. None of them 
wanted to buy a sheet of aqua board. So I said, fine, I'll bring up eight sheets of aqua board and you know, we'll go do that. Um, we'll, do the, we'll, we'll do the workshop. Workshop went great, everybody loved it. End of the workshop is, uh, Mr. Ireland, how am I gonna take this home? <laughs> so, well, a couple of them we cut up. One we pour, put into an RV, another girl, uh, this this uh, lady and her boyfriend come in from Minnesota uh, to pick him up with her pickup truck. And the last one, I uh, drove down to Sheboygan to drop off one of my students' pieces. So, um, you know, it's like when you got into the um, art show business, if you've ever done that, I did that for a few years, you know, you don't paint anything larger than your van. Uh, so that's kind of the, the lesson there. So um, if I can ask, what is the what is the drying time on the aqua board? Well, see, see that's just it. The aqua board, um, when, when you're going fully wet like this, I would probably do this in the morning and walk away from it until almost the next day. Um, it, uh, it absorbs water quite, quite well, and, and it stays. Um, it'll, like I, like I showed you, it'll, it'll pick up, and it picks up very easily. Um, I'm gonna have to change water in a minute, but, uh, Let's see. Let's see if we can get this a little bit closer to the to the piece itself. Yeah, there we go. Um, so it's still very wet, but one of those beauties about this is I'm going to go a little bit of a sharper. Sharper blade. Okay, so yeah, you can you can see that. Um, I can pick up shapes out of this right now. Which are which are almost pure white. So that gives me the ability, while I've got this beautiful arc and shape here, the things I used to do with just paint, now, Take that up. And I can just. So I've got the beginning of a real nice series of branches. Right here. So if you can see that, it's a little, it's a little fish eye, isn't there? So, like right here, I just picked this up very simply. Now it's, it's real wet and now, but I can go back into this even after it dries completely, spray it a little bit, or just go in with a little bit harder brush. And I can start picking this out and create a whole negative shape series design. And you can even see it. You can see it happening right here. So could you just push the camera straight over so it doesn't keystone? Like straighten it up with, yeah. So like, 
if you look like right in here, you see the shadow area, you see this line. There's, you know, this, this whole wash right now, if I stay with a complete prairie, it's already telling me a story. And this story is, I've got this beautiful reed that's going right through here. I've got another one going through here. Just with using some of this technique, let alone you know dropping in some some paint and you know separating this from the background, uh, I can uh, I can tell that story of how that how that's moving across there. So um, here, I'll, I'm going to drop it. So. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. So, um, yeah, we hear a lot of that clanking and dropping around here a lot. So, uh, I'm going to have to switch out to water and change a few things. Um, I wanted to show you that, uh, that before I took this little mini break, but that is probably one of the most exciting things you could do in the large watercolor world is it you know it's like being a kid again and if you can't have fun if you can't enjoy this you know what good is uh, what good is it for anybody right um mary's going to come over here right now and reintroduce herself she has a couple of bits of news that she wants to uh, lay on everybody and i'm going to change water i'll be back and fourth. Okay. okay, actually. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mary Ireland. I'm, I'm Michael's partner in crime here. Um, I just wanted to uh, just give you a couple of announcements. Um, so back in March, when COVID hit, we were one week away from opening up our gallery salon for private showings and, uh, you know, just small events. We're still planning on, on scheduling those, but we're gonna wait until springtime. Uh, that way we can show you the gallery and with that comes nice weather and we're going to extend it out to the deck uh, for more art. So we'll, we'll keep you updated on that. Um, we'd like you to join our email list on the website for updates uh, regarding you know, the actual date for that. So we're just gonna kind of do a little wait and see. Um, we're doing everything we can to bring Michael's art to you. So that said, we actually have, uh, we'd like to invite you to uh, Barrington's White House third Thursday virtual night out on November 19th from six to 7.30. We're gonna be featuring uh, the tour of the gallery salon as well as the art studio. Uh, the virtual tickets are free and you can actually go to our website and uh, click on the what's going on uh, in the menu for details and the link to register for that. So we hope that uh, you'll take us up on coming out here. We'd love to see you and uh, show you around. And Michael is still very busy <laughs> getting a lot more water. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, and again, your website is M I at IrelandWatercolors.com. Is that correct? That is correct. Right, right. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the M I is the the, the uh, email, but the the website is <laughs> www.IrelandWatercolors.com. Right. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. And again, uh, we're going to offer you know to go to the shop uh, portion of the of the menu there to shop for prints. And again, you get a 20% discount with the uh, code being uh, DuPage Art League, all caps. So thank you. I'm gonna turn it back over to Michael now. He's loaded up on water. All right. Inside now. <laughs> it's your studio. Okay. So, um, I am going to let this settle in a couple of minutes. Um, 
it is a shame because I feel like I have to paint so fast and it would be nice to slow it down and let, let it all settle in on its own, but I feel like I have to push it a little bit. Um, but I um, did want to show you one trick, whether it's whether it's a trick or not, but it's it shouldn't be a trick. It's just a technique, I guess. Um, wherever that big old brush went, there it is. Um, I showed you earlier uh, my messy butcher tray. Uh, I'll get, get to a cleaner one right now. Okay, so um, this is a hard one to convince new students and artists to really grab a hold of. Um, when you're painting this large, like I said, the, everything grows exponentially. Um, cost is one of them, obviously. Uh, where is my, okay, well, I'll grab some ultramarine. But, uh, so, you know, this is about a, a $15 tube of paint. And I'm, and I'm not doing this to, you know, brag or do anything or say, you know, but I mean, I've seen, you know, students and artists, you know, maybe, you know, use a tube of paint like this for six months or, you know, maybe longer, you know, um, this, this is uh, a part of the painting. So it's not only the butcher tray that holds the paint, but the painting. And in some respects, the painting actually becomes my butcher tray. Because what I'm doing, this will kill you right here. I'm just, I'm taking this whole thing. This is a tube of paint that's going right on, on the brush. So this is a glob of paint because to get as dark as you want and really get in there, it's going to take 20 or 30 passes of transparent watercolor and you're never going to get there. Um, so what this does then, this is like, you have to just embrace this monster here and say, okay, I'm going to take it. I want a big, big stroke. I'm going to mix it right there. I'm going to mix it right there on the, on the board. And it's a commitment. It's, it hurts the first time you do that, but the payoff, the payoff is wonderful. I mean, there's nothing that shines and screams rich and colorful more than just stringing this big, big stroke across. And it's fun, folks. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is, this is fun. And Yes, I should get paid for this. I was going to say, oh, you shouldn't even be paid for this. <laughs> but no, I shouldn't. <laughs> so, but that's a rest. But what, what it does for you, I mean, it's just, I mean, even if I, we're not to solve this, and I'm not actually expecting to. Uh, this is wonderful. And I really wish that you have that chance in your life to 
take this color across the board like this someday because it's just something else. Michael, do you have a favorite watercolor paint brand? As far as the brand goes? I believe so. Um, I work almost exclusively with Windsor Newton, or not with them, but I, that was the brand I started with. And I, I stay with it. Uh, I mean, I've tried all the others, the, the Holbeins and uh, all the other German brands, and, and they're, they're great. But um, it's a paint, the Windsor Newton, it's a paint I grew up with, paint I know. Um, so yeah, I, I do a fair amount of work in acrylic. Um, that's mostly golden that I use. Um, when I'm working, uh, let's see. When I'm working with acrylics, it's usually um, the golden fluid acrylics. Uh, works very well on any of these boards as well. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted you to see that you know, you can put this deep, dark color in there because it, as you know too, I mean, the thing is, even as vibrant as, as this is, you know that there's going to be, you know, it's going to uh, fade to an extent. I mean, that's what the colors do when we, <laughs> it's so exciting when you, when you paint fresh with fresh color on pure white paper or colored paper and it's so exciting you see that thing glisten and then it dries and you come back in a half an hour 45 minutes it's just not the same it doesn't have that glisten um so i mean you really have to lay this down hard and a lot um so i am going to give you a tip right here and it, it works on paper as well, uh, but it works on board tremendously. I mean, it's, if you want to get excited about seeing your colors come back, um, when I work on the watercolor board, and this is the other thing that changed everything, is, um, The first time I really pushed this across the board to the gallery and the art, art consultant world, uh, I'm talking to this uh, uh, this consultant. I said, "So, how do you feel about watercolor?" Oh, well, you know, we love watercolor. Well, how would you like to, you know, represent me and take some of my work? Well, the trouble is, you know, there's glass, there's matte, there's this and that, and you know, and it fades and all that stuff. And, God, if I hear that one more time, I'm gonna I'm gonna scream. I've I, I have a watercolor upstairs from the 1800s my aunt did, which I love. It hasn't faded a bit. I doubt if she put any varnish on it at all. Nevertheless, it's uh, you know watercolor. It stays. You know, of course, it's fragile. But I also tell people that if you to spend five thousand dollars for a couch and put it in the front window and get sunlight all over it, you're gonna have it's going to you know, fade as well. So anyway, when I finish up with board, I'll give it a, a light fixative coat of some golden UVLS um, solvent varnish. And how, how appropriate, how timely. I can't, I can't recommend that without a uh, a mask. <laughs> okay. Everybody's got to wear a mask, especially when you're spraying UBLS, ULBS, 
varnish. Um, preferably outside of the house. They also have a polymer, uh, which is water-based, and you can brush it on, spray it on. I roll it on, uh, though they say you shouldn't roll it, but I roll it because I break a lot of rules. And uh, I'll put up to 10 coats of um, the UVLS varnish on top of it. The gloss has a tendency to darken and enrich your color, whereas the matte and satin lighten it. But when you put this gloss on, it's like what I was talking about that first minute you laid down your wash and you saw this beautiful color. The whole thing comes back right before your eyes. By the time you get two or three coats on, it's magnificent again. And I don't even have to call Mary to run down and look at it again. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's, it's another trick of the trade, I guess. Uh, but once again, once I found that, got the mace and I started painting large like this, I, want, I could go to my consultants. I could say, I've got watercolor. It's not going to fade. It's going to be brilliant, bright, and rich. And guess what? It can be as large as you would like it to be. So. And I'm only restricted by my studio, which is, <laughs> which is pretty restrictive. But, because um, I've got about 24 feet uh, from here to there, which is really, in a sense, about two boards worth. So if I'm painting a 30-foot piece, I'm actually revolving pieces around as I'm painting, putting one next to the other, next to the other, making sure that we can keep two edges square and butt up against each other. So with that, if I haven't driven you crazy yet and you're still with me, I'm coming back to the prairie. Yeah. Um, and This. Why don't we just pick this up Evan, and lay it flat? And we'll let that little double right there. Watch it. You can lift that on top of that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And Mary, did you have any more you were going to say? Okay. How are we doing on time? We have at least half an hour or so. Uh, there was also a question about how often you paint, Michael. Do you paint every day? Oh, uh, not every day. Uh, it, it slowed down a little bit, to be honest. There was a time, I think, probably for about 10 years that I was painting almost every day. Um, and uh, I've slowed down a little bit in the respect that uh, I'm drawing a lot more, I'm observing a lot more. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I love the prairie and these big wide swaths. Um, but you know, you can only have so much fun. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, it's a, it's a technique or it's a look that, like I said, I've been, uh, fortunate enough that people have embraced, um, but I'm paying a lot of that. So, um, I'm actually more, more in tune with, I mean, I've got a lot, I'm actually painting more small pieces, to be honest. Uh, I'm painting more for myself. Well, Mary's shaking her head. No. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot more, uh, I guess, experimentation going on or 
you know, looking for new techniques and new ways to express myself. Uh, I, I'm fortunate that I have enough commissions with the prairie and the grasses that, you know, there's usually one of those going on throughout any period during the studio. Um, so it's hard to say. Uh, if I'm, I was looking around seeing what I'll say here. This is still pretty wet. Um, Do you want this? Oh, thanks. Thanks. Do you need the crew staff? I'll get it. I'm trying to figure out what would be the next step. Is it, uh, I think it might be dry enough. Can you want me to keep this? Yeah, would you please? That would be great. The, uh, the plan, as plans go, um, was that after I finished that big swath of color on that piece, I was actually going to take this to you know, an eight foot to show you how we can take this to that next uh, space, uh, to that next size. But I don't think we'll have enough time. Uh, because what it's it's almost eight o'clock, yeah. So um, so instead of having that, um, I'll tell you what I will do though is uh, I'm still gonna let this dry for a sec. Um, this is here's a piece that is from that Prairie series. And it's, it is finished. So you can see that there's, it's pretty good size. It's about a 48 by 48. Um, and that wild, crazy fun that we just had there, I would venture to say there's maybe, you know, 75 strokes in this of, of color and paint, and I can even show you here. I was showing you the um, the negative shapes that you can pull out of out of that aqua board, and you can you know what we do with our dark shapes to create you know that negative. We can actually reverse that, and that's like the most exciting thing in the world. It's almost like having white paint in your hands. Um, but in this regard too, and, and I, I'm not trying to get like overly spiritual or you know over over the top of any of that kind of thing, but each one of these strokes to really when I'm alone with this and I'm working with this, all I'm trying to do is create the best stroke possible. You know, one after another, and it becomes yeah, it becomes a, a bit of a road, a bit of a over and over. It's just practice, really. All, all I ever do in my paintings is practice. I try to create a beautiful wash after wash and create stroke after stroke. Um, I'm not sure if anybody plays golf, but it's like that. You know, it's, it's, that, what, it's that pure stroke, and that takes stroke after stroke after stroke to try to keep consistent, to keep right, to know that your club, that you can, you can pull your club up here and do a nice turn with it and go like that, or, you know, learning your tools. Fortunately, a beautiful painting comes out of it. And, um, 
you know, it's it's the practice, practice, practice thing that uh, yeah is so rewarding, I guess. So. Um, Oh, what else do I want to tell you? I'm still letting this dry and I'm not trying to just eat up time. My, Michael, I think uh, this question relates to the, to the smaller landscape that you have in front of you here. Uh, is uh, the shapes on the horizon, were those created with wash or did you also dab on the paper is how the question is worded. Well, it's essentially a wash. I mean, you, you can see that there's a, a graduation of this, of this blue that washes in, into the yellow. There's some of the alizarin that was leaked in there itself. So it created like a graduated wash. Um, but I did finish it off with a dry brush. So I didn't let it go right into, you know, the, the water. Some of the, you can see where this goes from maybe a hard line into the, into the water, but I, I dragged a brush across here just to get that, that leaf, that foliage kind of feel, that look. Um, one of those things that you can't necessarily, you know, you can't go in and paint. You just have to know that your brush is about to do that and it's gonna give you that effect. Um, so, I think. Great, and I'll just remind everyone, if you have questions that you'd like to ask Michael, go ahead and open your, your Q&A and go ahead and type those in. Also, if uh, you'd like a clarification, uh, go ahead and, and do that. Um, there's a, Another question, Michael, could you hold up the labels on the fixative and varnish you use? Sure. Uh, and wanted to, to make note of those. Sure. Um, this is Golden Colors, and this is the spray archival varnish. Uh, this particular is a gloss, and you can get a satin or a matte. Um, and then this is the polymer varnish. It's actually uh, essentially the same effect. You do get a bit of a harder shine with, with the spray, but uh, you need to you know, use this more with oh, two or three coats, but uh, at least. Um, but but it's, a great, it's a great product. I mean, and, I mean none of these are cheap, uh, but if you're a painter, if you're an artist, you know that nothing, nothing's cheap. At least, you know, nothing that's good. Um, so, let me grab one more thing here. So you haven't seen me working, uh, you haven't seen me working out much. Uh, <laughs> but... Okay, you do see me walk, walking around with a lot of weights. Um, when you're working with something this that's this large, um, you're going to have to find. I mean, basically, it's about flexibility and uh, a little bit of a little bit of creativity. How are you ever going to get around stuff? And you know, I I wish you could be here and work with me for a day or two. Um, because it's it's a lot of balance and you know and I wish I could tell you that I have it all figured out, but I'm balancing things left and right, you know, all the time. And um, so there's always new challenges. Um, <laughs> I remember when Mary and I were so excited, we finished finished up. Actually, it was quite quite early on. We did a piece for uh, Van Andel Research up in Grand Rapids. It was almost thirty foot long. And after we finished it, we're like, "How are we going to get it out of here?" I mean, it was really one of those things. I mean, of course, it was a great a great problem to have. But um, yeah, be careful what you wish for. 
is is one of those kind of things. Um, we are getting a little tight on time. I, I really planned a whole bunch more. Um, but uh, let me see if I can put a little a little form to this um, this piece so we go away with a, a fairly good feeling. Um, Now, once again, I'm pinning a little bit more upright than I normally would, but yeah, you know, it's important for you to see this. So, this is basically what I'm doing. I'm just going back in here and defining some pieces, but. This should give us a better idea in the end of what's happening here. It's, um, yeah, working inside these darks, it's, it is challenging. And I wouldn't normally pull off this kind of a, a stroke if I were keeping this more on a, because I, I really want this to take off. See, I'm already, I'm already painting with too small of a brush. I'm kind of rushing through this. Because that's what we want. We want that nice, rich color. And we want to some real definition here and we also want the paint to do the work say The thing is, and, and I think I just hit the nail on the head with uh, letting the paint do the work. And it's not something I'm doing very well at the moment. I, I'm going to be the first to tell you that. Um, but it's starting to work. Like even right here, there's becoming a real nice definition of how this is moving around. Um, and I, I'll be the first to admit I'm pushing it. Um, I'm 
but you can see that there's some real nice nice form happening right here and one of the things that I haven't paid attention to is any of this world over here. I'm gonna bring this back home a little bit. What's up, Mayor? Uh, I just didn't know if you need your reference picture or you're holding it. Okay. All right, thanks. Well, like I said in the very beginning, um, normally I would not take any chances and I would paint exactly what I've painted for every um, demo in the past, but I felt like, like you guys deserve it. <laughs> I mean, you have to take chances. And, and that's what, you know, what this is all about. And that's, you know, the idea of taking this out and painting, you know, large. I mean, that's the idea of just painting. You know, um, I have to laugh. Uh, David Becker posted a, uh, a Facebook page oh, a month or two ago. And it was a stack of papers of, of watercolor sketches or watercolor paintings that were, you know, rejects, throws, yeah, and hundreds of them. And uh, I, I think I did something like, I feel your pain or, you know, this or that. Well, in the same respect, I'm just gonna give you a quick little tour Okay, um, where did it go? Oh, all the way right over, right over here is a rack. Right there is a rack of rejects. <laughs> and it's um, masonite on top of masonite on top of masonite. Now, fortunately, you know, a lot of it, I can take that, that ground and, um, uh, paint over it, and I can make something out of it. And like I said, you know, it is building material. So push comes to shove, I can use it for wall paneling, I guess, or redo the ceiling someday. Um, so, well, this is uh, this is a slight disaster. <laughs> I mean, in a way, I mean, it looks okay. I wish I had a lot more time. Um, Ev, would you grab me that, yeah, that piece right there, that large, yeah, that piece. Um, this isn't much more finished, but in a way, this is what I did last night, because I was trying to figure out, work out that palette. And this is a lot smaller piece, but this is kind of where I was taking that. And I, I might be able to save that, but um, nevertheless, it's been a lot of fun and enjoyable. So, um, I think we're at about 8.15, and um, if, let me fix that real quick. Um, if there's any more questions, both Mary and I would be happy to answer, or, you know, anything right. we could do. Right, yeah, exactly. I will just go ahead and remind everyone, if you have questions for Michael, go ahead and open your Q&A window. Uh, again, on most Zoom screens, it's along the bottom edge. Uh, and 
an icon that just says Q&A with two talking bubbles. Go ahead and open that up and you can enter any of your questions that you might have. Uh, we certainly want to thank you, Michael, for uh, putting, uh, doing this for us. Uh, there is a question about, uh, do you worry about backwashes? About backwashes. Uh, that's how the question is worded. Do you worry about backwashes? Um, perhaps the person who answered the question could clarify. And while that's happening, may, there's another question. Um, on the smaller landscape, uh, were there three colors used? Uh, I think you said those at the beginning. Um, the person's thinking cobalt blue, uh, and then per perhaps you could let us know the names of the other two colors that you used. Yeah, the triad I was using was um, cadmium yellow, cobalt blue, and alizarin crimson. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, it's, it's a pretty dynamic set. Uh, the nice thing is that, you know, you can, you know, pull that, you, you can use the, the blue and the alizarin as, you know, to create your, your purple, uh, which kind of neutralizes that cadmium. Um, but then you can also pull out the, the blue or the cadmium itself and use that as a real nice accent or highlight as well. So. Okay, great. We, we did get a little clarification on the, the question about backwashes. Um, the person suggesting like spots in larger washes that cause water spots or blooms. Oh, the bloom. Um, I'm usually pretty aware of those blooms. Uh, the the thing is, uh, especially on well on the border on the big piece is, um, tonight I was working pretty fast and furious, um, but you know per wash. I mean I'll sit with I'll sit with these. Um, you can see all this. All this water is pulling up right here, and um, really throughout the whole drying process, I don't walk away from this. And I just I spend the next you know whatever it is twenty minutes, half hour, just picking up, um, and I'm usually pretty diligent about that. Um, uh, so it's not something that usually shows up in a lot of my final work. Uh, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty aware of that. Um, but uh, I mean, it happens to, it happens to the, to the best of them. Uh, most, I, I think most, you know, that's one of those, what I guess, I hate the term, you know, uh, what was it, happy mistakes? Uh, I think that's just a, an early mistake. I mean, unless it's per, on purpose by, by an artist that likes to have that, that bloom, uh, you know, I mean, that's fine too. Um, but I think it's something that with good care and good practice, it's, it's an avoidable issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a couple of people have, have, are noting, um, you know, we, we like the, the painting as as you did it, of course, you were in, certainly in a hurry to do it for us. Um, you know, the expressiveness of it, it is great. Um, if you had more time to work on it, is there anything in particular you would do differently? Um, yes. Um, I think I would have, you know, when I, when I initially built this color, uh, which consisted of a mixture of the uh, cobalt and alizarin, I probably would have tried to get a little bit more cobalt in there, a little deeper right off the bat. Um, I, uh, 
certainly, you know, well, talk about that blush. Uh, here, here it is right there. Um, I think it was just a matter of just slowing the whole process down and, you know, not, I didn't take the opportunity to, to step back. Back to your other question, that is a, see right there, that would have created a big old blossom. So per your last question, we got rid of that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, the, the thing you need to do is, you know, do your work and take the opportunity to, to walk away from it and stand across the room, be critical. That really wasn't something that I afforded myself. Uh, so, you know, that becomes almost a, a moot point in a sense, I guess. Right, well, okay. we understand that this is a whole different environment uh, with the class like this. Uh, there, there was another question about uh, when you go over the watercolor on the aqua board with another wash, does it pick up the initial paint? It can. Um, you have, it's not too dissimilar from working on paper in the respect that you have, a, you have one chance um, to lay a transparent color over another color. Maybe one and a half chance. Uh, I mean, you certainly, can, I can't go back over that and spray it with any wet color. But um, once it dries and it's really dry, if I give it a day, um, like that, that yellow that's in the corner, I can take a real nice sweep of whatever blue or, you know, I could take an ultramarine and a stroke with the transparency of the ultramarine, create a beautiful green stroke out of that because of the transparencies of the two. So, um, and then, you know, there are some colors that lift a little bit easier than others. Uh, some that are a little bit more staining than, uh, than others. You can have a lot more success going over a color that is a staining color that's on the, on the base of it than you would another. Um, but no, you, you've, got a, you've got a shot at it. Um, it is it is a material that uh, doesn't accept a lot of overwork sometimes. Um, right. So. Uh, there's another question about um, the the varnishing. I think you mentioned both the spray and uh, applying the varnish with a brush. Could you explain when you would use which technique? Um, maybe we misunderstood. No, 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 that's fine. Um, one of the, I, I, I hardly ever use a brush anymore. I, I'll, I'll use a, uh, uh, a real tight foam roller. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Here's one. Oh, yeah. Um, one, of the, one of these small six inch rollers um, for the liquid polymer varnish. Um, probably one of the scariest moments in the world is that first coat that you put down on there uh, because, uh, you know, it's a water-based varnish. And as you roll your first coat over, it's got to be slow and easy or else you're going to start seeing like little, you know, pieces of this pink or orange start popping up. And then you just start seeing your, your paint come up. I mean, it's a little scary. Uh, the best thing you can do for anybody is find a good eight by 10 sheet and practice yourself. Uh, if you want to mitigate most of the issue, I will go in with the spray varnish first and just give it almost like a fixative type of coat. Uh, that'll hold it. You still want to be very careful when you go over with either a brush or a roller, uh, but that'll mitigate a lot of the, the issues. Practice, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it is scary. You know, if you, know, you spend 20 hours on a piece of work and then 
all of a sudden you put a roller over it and you're picking up paint. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Of course. Um, someone is asking if you could um, bring the finished painting that's off to our right uh, and so we could see that another time. Sure. Thank you. Oh, no, I don't think that will stand. Um, so yeah, this is, this is pretty, uh, this is pretty typical of, uh, a majority of the, a majority of the work that goes out to, um, this type of work goes into a lot of hospital and healthcare, uh, places, it seems, uh, it gets picked up like that. Um, well, that's actually the original. Yeah of one of the pieces in the open edition prints. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. A blaze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, we, we certainly are enjoying it. Several comments about how lovely that is. Uh, thank you. One of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a favorite from the from your viewers as well. Well, we certainly want to thank you for all of your time and effort putting this together for us. And, and of course, our thanks go out to the Art League too as, as far as putting this together. Um, we will be sending out uh, the website to everyone who has registered, uh, but once again, for those who might be watching us at a later time, your website is uh, www.irelandwatercolors, all one word, all lowercase, irelandwatercolors.com. Yeah, that's it. Right, right. Okay, well, and again, just comments about um, appreciating your, your enthusiasm and um, certainly your obvious passion for, for the work that you do. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, unless you have anything else that you'd like to share with us, I think uh, we, we are finished for tonight. Okay. Uh, no, I think we're good here. And uh, once again, Barry, thank you very much. And anybody that's left on the on the Zoom call here, uh, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, take care, everyone. Yeah, it's been our pleasure. So thank you so much for joining us tonight, everyone. Stay safe and healthy, and we hope to see you again soon. Again, uh, our next uh, presentation is going to be, let me just double check the date so I make sure I get it correct. It's October 19th for another art demonstration. We'd love to see you back again. So thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who participated tonight. Uh, see you soon. Good night. Good night. Take care now. Thank you.